Hi everyone. Today's video is called how to know if an INFJ loves you. So I made this video because I know INFJs, they're known among the 16 personalities as some of the most empathetic personality types. So they are known to be kind to most people, even to those they dislike, and they're known to put other people's needs before their own. And so because they do this, it can be kind of hard to know if they really do like you or if they're just being nice. How do you know if an INFJ really likes you or if they're just being nice? So, okay, when you're in love with somebody, I believe your core focus is on kind of saving the other person. I think a lot of people are attached to this idea of being another person's hero, savior, being the other person's redemption, being the other person's, uh, you know, uh, second chance, being the other person's uh, helper, supporter, ultimate foundation. So I think when we love other people we demonstrate it by thinking of things we can do to save or help the other person what can I do to help them what can I do to be there for them what can I do to uh, take care of them and we show love then by acting and treating other people in the way we ourselves want to be loved so we think about and this is something very self-centered but it's something we do we think about how we want to be loved and then we love other people the way that we think we want to be loved and so a lot of the time the consequence can be we don't really make the other person feel loved at all so our intentions are pure we're trying to be loving we're trying to be caring but even though we are the other person is not able to see it because sometimes they are one of the other 15 personality types perhaps even the opposite and so they don't even know or notice it because it's not something they would do for themselves and it's not something they've even known themselves to value or appreciate. It can be something incredibly good for them and it can be something very positive for them. But they might not at first recognize this as love or even know that you are doing this for them. So there can be times when we do things for other people and we show love and when we know and notice that the other person doesn't see it, doesn't even know it, doesn't even notice it. Okay, so as an INFJ, what are the tells that tell you if you really love somebody? Or what if you're a family member, a friend of an INFJ, what are the things you can look for if you want to know if an INFJ loves you? And I mean this either romantically or just amicably. I mean this as a friend or as a um, partner or as a family member. It means just love in a general sense. So, 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 the INFJ personality type, and this is number one, will constantly put themselves in your shoes. And this is uh, based on an INFJ's hidden desire of other people putting themselves in their shoes. INFJs have a hidden desire of somebody seeing them and being able to put in themselves on in your shoes and to understand you. INFJs long to be understood and to have that feeling, wow, this person gets me, this person sees me. You know, I've had those moments uh, many times uh, with my girlfriend where when I talk to her, it's like, wow, she really gets me. And that thing is something very meaningful to me. And that's why I can be almost excessive in my desire to do this for other people. I am doing it all the time. I'm constantly trying to and this is number two. Always have empathy with the other person's situation. So INFJs are almost constantly trying to empathize with you and see things from your perspective, to know what intentions you have, to know your feelings, to understand how your feelings influence your actions and behavior. INFJs are constantly thinking, what is this person feeling and why did they do what they did? And so they will forgive and this is uh, number three an INFJ will forgive almost anything you do no matter how bad or how difficult or how rough INFJs are really forgiving personality types and so INFJs are people that demonstrate love by showing forgiveness and looking turning the other cheek and looking the other way so the INFJ personality type will look that way and pretend not to see what you did or pretend not to uh, been hurt by what you said and 
uh, try to understand you or when you did something bad or toxic or difficult they'll try to get you and understand that yeah he she's human she does this sometimes this is part of who she is and uh, I understand and I accept that about her and I know we all have bad days and I know I can be bad too sometimes you know just going on down that road so this is number four INFJs will put your needs above their own and I said this in the beginning of the video and it's true INFJs do tend to put the needs of other people first but um, while INFJs will in general put their, the needs of other people about themselves, no matter who it is, an INFJ will put your needs above other people. And that's, I think, uh, another important thing. An INFJ who loves you will put your needs above the needs of other people. And uh, that's just uh, how you can tell it. Yeah, this is a person who does do a lot of good things for other people, but... When two people are having a bad day, they will most often come to me. When I'm having a bad day and my friend is having a bad day, they will most commonly come to me first. And, uh, yeah, that means something. Number four is undying loyalty. And I think INFJs are very loyal personality types, and types that lo value loyalty a lot. So that includes, you know, um, putting the needs of their group above other groups, putting needs about you before other people and honoring commitments to you and honoring things they say to you and doing the right thing for you and uh, trying their best to do it. So you can tell an INFJ loves you when they are doing their darndest to come true for you even though it's uh, stupid to do it because there are times when it's stupidly loyal. You know, you can have a partner who is loyal and you can have a partner who is stupidly loyal. A stupidly loyal partner will um, walk through an entire town to look for the perfect cake for you, you know, uh, because they promised you cake. And a stupidly loyal partner will uh, spend hours trying to fix something really small and simple for you just because they want to fix it for you, even though you could probably fix it yourself or even though you could probably live without it or even though it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, they will do it because they said they would and uh, that's that and that there is some personal pride and stubbornness in that uh, you know they, they rest their entire pride and character on being able to uh, be there for you so I, I this is a word of advice to you if an INFJ is trying really hard to be loyal towards you but is still not able to come through appreciate them and uh, Tell them you appreciate that they tried. <laughs> and I think that's uh, I think very important because I can feel very crushed if I'm not able to do these things. And if I afterwards feel that I failed other person and I wasn't able to, uh, even though I tried so hard to do it. Mm. Now, let's go to point number six. And that is uh, freedom in abundance. INFJs show love by giving other people freedom. So while INFJs are one of the IJs and people that are very self-controlled, INFJs are people that give a lot of other people freedom and freedom to be irresponsible. INFJs take on responsibilities so other people do not have to. INFJs take on tasks and chores and duties so you won't have to, so that you will be free to do what you want to do. So if there are things that need to be done, dishes, whatever, the INFJ will take on these things for you because they want you to be free. And so this is once again part of that unconscious desire of an INFJ to be free. You know, INFJs love having freedom to do whatever they want to do. But INFJs constantly are obsessed with responsibility and self-control. And so if there are things that need to be done... The INFJ is uh, stubbornly going to do it, no matter what. INFJs are typically the people that will do all the work in a project uh, so that they can rest afterwards. So, because they want to know all the work is done. And when it's done, they can rest and then they will feel free and then it will be great. <laughs> but uh, so that brings us to the topic, you know, INFJs give a lot of freedom. And if they give you freedom and if they take responsibility for you, 
and for your actions and for your situation and for what's going through on in your life, that's a sign of love. And I mean this in the sense of, you know, picking up your slack when you're overworked or when you're busy or when you're going through a difficult time in life. The INFJ will normally pick up your chores and to-do lists and tasks and any small things you can do uh, in order to get on. And as, at this point of the video, I really want to make a side note. INFJs are not always obvious about doing these things. INFJs are not going to tell you to your face, I'm doing this for you. <laughs> INFJs are not going to say to, your, to you, I'm being really loyal right now, I'm being really stubborn doing this. Uh, if the INFJ is more feminine or more turbulent or a bit more shy, uh, a lot of time they're going to hide any evidence of anything they're doing for you. Uh, so their, their hope is that you will feel the effects, the positive effects of what they did without you knowing that they did it. And that's it. The INFJs are very careful, very subtle in how they show love and in how they do things. And so I think they can be described as almost sneaky in what they do and how they do it, especially if they are less assertive and less confident in themselves. So INFJs that are very shy or INFJs that are a bit more um, avoidant or a bit more... Uh, what should you say, like uh, open-ended or just uh, maybe a little bit, even a bit neurotic will be very subtle. So you won't always notice that they're doing this. So focus on, do I feel the effects of this? When I'm around this INFJ, do I feel happier? Do I feel lighter? Do I feel more understood? Do I feel more uh, accepted? Do I feel forgiven? Do I feel judged? Do I feel... Uh, these things. Notice your feelings when you're around this person, not necessarily uh, the obvious thing they did or seeing what they did. You know, that's part two. You know, you can start looking for that second. That's kind of interesting. Follow their crumb trails, you know, follow the breadcrumbs. Why did they feel this way? How did this happen? How come the house is clean when I came home? How come these things happened? And uh, so you'll see there from there on, okay, that's must have been and can only have been one person. And that must be that person. Uh, the step one before you do this is just uh, how am I feeling when I'm around this person and that can be the thing um, if you feel constantly on edge around the person constantly stressed constantly annoyed constantly tense question really question if that person loves you and cares for you and be very honest with yourself does this person really love me does this person really care for me because why, if that's the case, do I constantly feel on edge? Why do I feel so uh, like I have to protect myself and pr uh, explain myself? Why do I feel all these things? Because that's a sign that you're not in the right relationship. Focus on the positive. What are the positive feelings I'm feeling around this person? And try to pick up on that first. So this brings us to the last points. And that is just what INFJs do. And I think... Uh, Another way of showing love is by protecting other people, not just saving them, but protecting them. So protection uh, is another important topic. And here, what an INFJ will do is, an INFJ will always keep your path clear and make sure you never get stuck. So if an INFJ loves you, they will keep uh, responsibilities, obstacles, uh, to-do lists, chores out of your way because they want to protect you from it. They want to keep you free. They want to keep you open. They want to keep you feeling like you can do whatever you want and like always all bridges are open. Uh, so they will find open ways. They will open and clear paths for you so you can move forward. Number seven, or sorry, number eight. An INFJ will never push you or try to control you and will keep you from being pushed around by other people. So if they notice that other people are pushing you around, or if they, they see other people trying to control you or manipulate or use you, they will protect you from that. So, that's, so those are things that INFJs will protect you from. INFJs can become very angry when protecting people from other people, can become very aggressive in yeah, defending the people they care about. And that's very un 
characteristic for the INFJ because the INFJ is very forgiving towards other people and accepting of other people, but they are not accepting of when other people are being to people they love or care for. And uh, they will say, hey, give this person a break. Hey, don't push this person around. Hey, don't be mean to this person. Hey, don't do this to that person. Give the other person some space. Give them some understanding. Give them some empathy. So, yeah. Number nine. As an INFJ, you will never hold spite or the past over your partner. And I've noticed when I study other relationships that I'm very uh, sensitive to spite. And I'm sensitive to the past. I believe the past is something that can truly pass uh, trap <laughs> uh, another person. So what that means is I never hold the past behavior of another person over them or their shoulders. Perhaps I've sometimes thought about doing it, but I've stopped myself very quickly. I've told myself, no, that's something you never do. You never hold another person's past over their head. You always give them a chance to change or to move on. If you hold the past over another person, you trap them. You keep them from growing. You keep them from moving forward. So don't uh, bring up negative, bad things another person did in the past. Don't hold past traumas or struggles or bad conflicts over another person. Just move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. And so that means just... Uh, I think something that's, I think, essential to a lot of relationships. I think if uh, you're not prepared to move on, uh, eventually the relationship is over. And that's just how it is. And that's another point. Number 10. INFJs are never going to hold numbers or finances over you. So... Financially responsibility, uh, issues with money, counting who did what or how often somebody did something, it's not going to happen. Who paid for lunch? Who paid for dinner? An INFJ is never going to care about these things. And that's why a lot of INFJs are into financial troubles. And that's why a lot of INFJs are money troubles. Uh, because... INFJs just don't care about or think about their own economic or financial needs and don't count their money. And while some people count their money a lot and go back, how much did I spend today? What did I spend my money on? Uh, should I spend it on that? Did that person contribute uh, to that equally? What did they do? Was it fair? Was it just? INFJs won't think about those things. And that means just it's not important to us. It's not uh, necessary. Okay. Sometimes I pay more, sometimes you pay more. And that's it. And I don't want to think about it. I don't need to think about it. I don't want you to have to think about it. I don't want you to have to feel that you have to constantly contribute equally. I want you to be able to do things naturally. And yeah, overall, the fundamental part of this, INFJs will never want to trap you. INFJs will always want you to feel free. So... Do you have an INFJ in your life? And how do this person make you feel loved? How does this person make you feel loved? What does this person do for you? What does this person make you feel? Do you have an INFJ family member or friend? Or are you an INFJ yourself? If you are an INFJ, have you noticed or thought about how loving you can be? I think you should think about it. You can be really loving, you can be really kind, you can be really generous, and you should think about it, and you should be aware of it. And it's something positive, and something good, and something to be proud of. So be proud of it. And um, yeah, just be you. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, share it with other people. This was Eric Dorr in the Dark. Thanks for watching, and see you all tomorrow.